Hi, I'm Lacey Gardner, and this is Sager's Genetics. Here in Modesto, California, it is very center of California in the, in the Central Valley. Here it's uh, pretty arid, it doesn't rain in the summer, and um, we get most of our rainfall through November to March. So there's a lot of varieties we can grow, trees we can grow here that you can't grow anywhere else. It's a very unique region of the United States. We breed fruit trees by hand pollinating and cross pollinating to create different varieties. Uh, this started with my grandfather, Floyd Zager. He started back in the 50s. He grew, he started with azaleas, and then he got a job breeding nectarines and peaches. And that's when he started with his white peaches. And from there, we've got plums, apricots, cherries, almonds, peaches, nectarines. For trees that grow fruit very early in the season, the seeds do not mature properly. They are almost gelatinous, and they will not grow on their own. So what we do is we go through a tissue culture process where we baby them, we take a seed out, we put it into a nice auger mix in a test tube, and then we put it under, uh, we stratify it, which means we put it in the cold, in a cold, basically a refrigeration unit in the dark for a couple weeks. Then we take them out. So hopefully they've got a little roots on them. And then we plant them outside here. And so these, these are tissue culture and the seeds aren't that great because they don't grow that well, but they do get early trees and that's what we want. So we grow them here, then we put them out and we put little uh, boxes over the top to keep the humidity in. They get a little bigger and then eventually we plant them in the field. Of those 70,000 to 100,000 trees, we maybe select 50 of them. And then after that, maybe three or four out of those. I mean, I would love to say flavor is the first thing we look for, but I don't think we're going to sell an ugly fruit, <laughs> an ugly piece of fruit. So we always have to look for the size and the color that the market people want. And then we go for the flavor and we have all different kinds of flavors. We don't pick one or anything in particular. It's just, if it looks great, we're going to pick it out. We're going to grow it and see if it grows well for our farmers. And if it does that, we show it to them. We've moved out of the greenhouse into under the shade cloth so the little baby trees don't burn. And let's see, these varieties are cherries. It's like kids, they all grow up different. They'll all have different characteristics. Some will grow big, some will grow small, some just won't make it. But that's how we figure out what works well, is what survives. Yes, I absolutely believe that this is an art form of crossbreeding. My grandfather had the gifts, he could figure out which pollen went on which tree, and it always came out with such great varieties. Um, we do it now, the grandchildren, and I hope I have a fraction of the talents that he had because he really uh, made put us on the map. My friends call me a fruit snob because all I do is taste fruit all day, so I'm quite particular about what I like. But yeah, I, there's so many great varieties out there. I love nectarines, white nectarines are great. I love pluots, I love cherries, so. Things worked out well for me because I have to taste fruit all day in the summer. <laughs>here, this is the plum section of the test block, IS plums, all different kinds of plums. We try to just create farmer-friendly varieties, but we don't know what is gonna be best for each grower. They have all different conditions, they have different times they wanna grow fruit. We make a list of the best of the best, and when people come every week, we show them those varieties, and they decide whether they like it, they want it in their program. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. These are all very, very new varieties and people that take these varieties that are new, they take a real big chance and sometimes it pans out, hopefully most of the time, but there's no guarantees in life and no guarantees in farming. <laughs> so I'm Ed Livo and um, you know, with Edible Solutions and uh, here at Zegers, I mean, you find all kinds of exciting things all the time. And, you know, looking on these rows where you have each individual tree, you know, offers a different exciting possibility 
Um, definitely here we have one, an example of that, and this would be this uh, interspecific plum variety, the plum uh, apricot cross. And uh, this one right here has these dark, almost red leaves. So this really suggests that it breaks in the spring with great red, deep red color, which uh, Lacey has confirmed does is the case. Makes it an exciting possibility for the home garden, gardener because it's an edible ornamental. So, and then you take and you add to it this interesting fruit. So we've got this, this plum apricot cross. Really, really interesting berry plum flavor and um, just enough acid combined with a good amount of sugar, um, a lot of sugar. And look at that, this deep dark red flesh. I mean, this whole tree is just a, an amazing addition to anybody's yard with, you know, the attribute of an edible ornamental and then this wonderful eating experience that it offers. Some of my favorite things about working here is when we have brand new stuff that's just growing and you look at it in a field and it's amazing and you're like, this is something brand new I've never seen before. And another thing I also really love that's just kind of a personal thing for me is when I've gone to other grocery stores, let's say in other countries, we, I went to England once and we went to a grocery store and there was our varieties in their, in their grocery store. And I think that makes a really special feeling for me. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm here at Green Acres Nursery and Supply in Sacramento. And the other day we got to go down to Zager Genetics down in Modesto. I love Zager Genetics and I've been selling them for years. And right here is one of my favorites. This is the Arctic Star Nectarine. It's a white nectarine. It's one of the earliest producers. It's low acid, it's self-fruitful, and it's delicious. One of the fun things that I find working in a nursery is when people get excited about something and especially in the fruit trees. I've seen people walk through our rows and go like, for example, this pluot and go, I didn't know you could grow those in your backyard. They look at it and they're going, wow, that's amazing. Can you imagine we're gonna grow these awesome fruits in our backyard? We're really happy to carry Dave Wilson fruit trees. They're our major grower that we get our trees from. They're in our stores. Come on in and really check out the selection. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and looking at our test block at Zager's Genetics. And we are gonna go eat some more fruits, so I will see you next time. <laughs>